Example 4.2 says we're going to use the graph of f. And I'm going to underline f because it is a uh, function defined with the domain of all real numbers. That's what I'm circling there. And the equation is f of x equals, and it's that double bar x. So at this time, if you have not gotten out your uh, uh, your shapes, your parent function library, um, all those different shapes that we did in section two, you should go ahead and have those handy uh, just in case you don't have them all memorized. They'll be very useful for this section. So this should be recognized as the greatest integer function. And we're supposed to use that graph to help us obtain the graph of g of x. So notice that g of x also has the greatest integer function in it, but it also has the plus one. So it's supposed to look just like the greatest integer function, except this plus one is gonna have a shift up by one unit. So take your greatest integer function picture, and I want you to shift the whole thing up by one. So I'm gonna start at the origin, so my origin is now going to move up to 1. It's going to be at 0, 1. So that first step in your greatest integer function is not going to be sitting on the x-axis. It's now going to be um, one unit above. I say that's the first step. It's the one that's the first one that has positive um, uh, x values chosen. And then from there, I can just draw the rest of the graph. And I'm always trying to fill as much of the window as I possibly can, given the domain that is uh, defined. And for us, the, def the defined domain is all real numbers. So I will use as much of the window as possible. And I'll label this as G. So uh, one note that I will make is that I did not have to graph F and G at the same time. The goal of this example is to graph G. That's the goal. And if you already have an idea of what F looks like, then you don't need to graph F and G at the same time. Just go to that final result.